Hey there, this is Pat Ennis of Ennis Legacy Partners. Welcome to the Exit Readiness Podcast. I'm here with co-host Walter Dial, CPA and tax partner at GRF CPAs and Advisors in Bethesda, Maryland. Our mission here on the podcast is to provide you, the business owner, with subject matter expertise on topics pertaining to building transferable or sellable business value and for planning your eventual exit from the business. We want to help you build a business that's sellable and then help you exit successfully on your own terms and conditions. And building value, of course, a steady increase of revenues is a key driver of value. And increasing revenues always involves some level of marketing strategy. Perhaps your strategy has been word of mouth and referrals or mailers or email campaigns. You have a website that you always consider to be instrumental in marketing your business, but maybe your website is not creating revenue and you just, you're just not sure how to make that happen. Maybe you haven't even thought about it. Or maybe you have, and it just seems too complicated, and you and you haven't taken any steps to make it happen. Well, we want to continue to bring clarity to this issue of websites and marketing strategies because it can be complicated, it can be expensive, particularly if you get it wrong. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about again today: simplifying your website marketing strategy. And our guest today is Michael Buzinski of Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing. Uh, Buzz, as most uh, call him, is a lifelong entrepreneur, digital marketing thought leader, best-selling author, been dubbed visionary marketer by the American Marketing Association. Uh, His sole mission is to reduce the prevalence of entrepreneurial poverty in the U.S. We want to see that happen, too. Uh, He has simplified digital marketing success with his rule of 26, which we're going to hear about today, to help business owners avoid the time drain and frustration of managing profitable digital marketing campaigns. So Buzz, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me, Pat and Walter. Hey, Buzz, great to have you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start us off. So, you know, you're familiar with what we do. Pat and I, you know, we work with business owners and one of our main objectives is to help them grow the value of their business. And obviously, the value of a business is highly dependent upon revenue (laughs) and, you know, a buyer is going to be most interested in a company that is steadily increasing revenue. So a lot of the clients we work with, you know, they're, they can be smaller. They usually have some type of marketing department, but not necessarily always. Mm -hmm. Um, But one area that I think is really overlooked, that's why I'm really excited to have you here today because even I don't really when someone mentions website and revenue, I don't put those two together. And I don't think most of our business clients do either. So can you tell us how does an owner even start thinking about their website as like a revenue generator? That's a great question, Walter. The, this, and it's the reason I wrote the, the book, The Rule of 26, because service-centric businesses don't see their website as a revenue generating tool. They think of word of mouth, they think of referrals, and those are great, especially when you're getting started and it's just you and you don't have a budget to market or or advertise or anything like that. The problem is, is that relying on word of mouth and referrals is one, kind of arrogant, and two, not scalable. I say arrogant because you're, you're hoping that people are going to remember you and that you're going to be on top of my of their mind of among all the other things that are happening in their lives. Referrals to think that your friends are going to be always thinking about you and who they can give to you as new clients, right? We're busy, we're selfish, we're human. It is what it is, right? And yes, there are ways to garner predictable referral sources, but they're not as scalable as websites can be. Because website, a good website is a uh, is a salesperson who is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, doesn't take time off, doesn't call in sick, doesn't ask for raises, and does exactly what you tell it to do every time. I like that. And that's what makes the scalability of a business, a service-centric business, actually viable. And so when we're talking about exit strategies, 
that is exactly what a buyer is looking for. I want to know how many leads are you getting per week from your website? And what are the tactics you're using to push those leads? And what are the quality of those leads? What's your close rate on all of those things? And so all of a sudden, this website becomes a centric part of what you do in all of your marketing. Because most times, they're going to go to your website before they do business with you anyway. They've got statistics yeah. that show that 68% of all consumers will visit the company's website before talking to them. Yeah. So what differentiates, and I think this is an appropriate question. If not, Pat will ask, Pat will ask a better one. <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> what, what in your mind differentiates a revenue generating website from just the basic website? You know, are there certain okay. features that one has or? Yes, so there are, there are a few. We'll touch bases and we'll just kind of get a, a, a 10,000 foot look at this, okay? So the biggest thing right now for B2B is the U factor of their website, okay? So historically and continually, um, the majority of your website uh, visitors are gonna go uh, come from your, your desktop, okay? Um, even though people are saying, well, everybody uses their mobile phone to, to um, look, at, look for uh, services, when we're doing B2B, usually we're sitting at our desk and we're not using our phone because we're looking for more information than just, hey, do you have a sale going on? What's your business hours and stuff like that, right? So, so given that, uh, you know, on that side of it, then the next most important thing is that you have a website that talks about your visitor's problem, the solution you provide for that problem, and the, the, what, is gonna, what their life is going to look like after you've solved that problem. Historically, B2B service-centric businesses have been I, we, us. We provide this service. I've been in business this long. We do, you know, we do it better than anybody else. Here's our uh, credentials, dot, dot, dot. The modern day website needs, to, and then uh, the revenue generating website, I should say, needs to be saying, we understand you. You are feeling this. You are experiencing this. This is the solution to those pains. Here is what it would look like if you had us do it. And this is how your life's going to look like once that is done. Now, you could be somebody who doesn't provide solutions, but maybe you help people uh, aspire to their dreams. Great. Same thing. You want to be here. This solution is the bridge to it. And this is what it's going to look like once you attain your dream. And those are the only two things that service-centric businesses can do is solve a problem or help attain a dream. That's it. So keep it simple. Interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> how many of your 26, or okay, describe the 26 role. Because that's, okay, so that's your solution to all the problems, right? Yeah. right? So, the, so the rule of 26 simplifies the strategy in which we're going to approach increasing website revenue. And specifically for this rule, doubling it. And I chose doubling because it's something that's attainable, easily obtainable, and comprehensible, right? If I tell you, hey, we're going to increase your website revenue by a thousand, you can't comprehend what that even looks like. You'd have to get the calculator out just to do the numbers, right? But if I say double and you're doing a hundred thousand dollars a year or you're doing a million dollars a year, that means that, oh, well then I will be getting $200,000 or $2 million. Oh, okay, great. So what does that look like? The rule of 26 states that if you increase your unique traffic by 26%, your conversion rate from the, that traffic by 26% and your average revenue per client coming from your website by 26%, you will get a compounded output of 100% more revenue or double the revenue from your website. So it's really only three, tact, uh, three objectives that we are looking at instead of all of the, like, like you, some people do assume like, oh, there's 26 steps. No, it's 26% which is very obtainable on each of those objectives. So there's only three. They're very easy to 
comprehend, right? Increasing. So say you have a thousand. Now I only need 260 more people to come to my website. How do I do that? Now we're going to tactics, right? But mm -hmm. the strategy is increase those three and you're going to get double. It's a math driven. You can't break it. And it doesn't matter what kind of service you're providing because these are the numbers. All right. Give us the objectives again, slowly. Okay. So it's your unique traffic right? So no bots. We're not looking at people coming back to your website or anything like that. So new, new visitors coming into your website, then 26% increase on your conversion rate. So that is how many visitors reach out to you in a profitable way. Some people think a phone call, some would say, fill out a form. Others might say schedule an appointment. Even others would say all three of those are conversions. You need to increase those by 26% your average revenue per client. So this comes down to the quality of the leads that are coming in, so which also goes to the quality of traffic you're, you're pushing to your website as well. Um, there's many ways that I, I describe that in the book, but some of the easiest ways is to make sure that you are charging what you should be charging, especially today with inflation. A lot of people are trying to hold on to their rates thinking that they're doing their clients a service but really they're discounting them because when you discount your services you're discounting your ability to serve at 100 percent. and that was one of the biggest things for service-centric businesses that i see uh happen right off the bat i was just doing a keynote uh, in gainesville uh, texas two weeks ago and there were 10 businesses there all of them were able to within 20 minutes of talking to all 10 of them find 26% more revenue from the clients, their new clients coming from their website, just like that. And so now they're going to go test that for the next 10 and they're going to go, wow, that was easy. Nobody gave me any pushback. Maybe I should do another 26%. And they're going to do that for the next 10. And then if they don't get it, they're going to do it again because most people are grossly under billing. And that means that they're discounting their service, which means they're discounting the output that they can provide to their clients. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So tell us about you. You've written a book. Do you do consulting as well? Yes, sir. That is uh, one of the reasons I wrote the book was to give people something to chew on. If they didn't understand it, it was like, hey, listen, I've got a short book. It's only 120 pages. These are the three objectives that I'd like to attack with you. And um, here's some tactics if for some reason you want to try it on your own right? I mean, that's, you got to give that out there. So I don't hold anything back. It's a very straightforward book. I don't bore you with a bunch of stories or anything like that. And there's no hard pitch or anything like that at the end. It's just basically, here's enough tools for you to do it on your own, or you can come talk to me and, and, and that's where we're going to go. We're going to go with that strategy of doubling that revenue. And it, you can hold me accountable to it too, because I've given you my monikers of success right off the bat before you even hired me. So when you look at a website, what do you, what are you seeing as like the, the biggest problem with websites in general for service businesses? Is there something you see on a fairly regular basis? The first one is what we were talking about earlier, the I's versus the U's, right? I, me, we, us versus you, yours, right? And talking to your, uh, your, your perfect client. Um, and that's like the, the, the second thing is one. Okay. So first we're talking about ourselves is the is a big mistake. The second is trying to talk to try to appease everybody who comes to your website. One of the big things about uh, increasing your average revenue per client is only talking to your most profitable clients, right? Because revenue, you know, gross revenue is a vanity metric, right? EBITDA, <laughs> that that's okay, great, but profit that's what sells businesses. How profitable are you? I don't care that I've had multi-million dollar companies. How much money did I keep of that multi-million dollars a year in my pocket? Because that's what people right. are buying, right? Yeah. That profitability. And so when we try to push a bunch of trash to our website, meaning that we're trying to attract everybody to our website and let the website filter them out, we're going to end up with a lot of trash on the back end. And so you're going to be wasting your time with people who don't belong with you and you're going to be compelled as a business owner to take that business and make them fit, which is going to cost you profit in the end. And so when we talk about ourselves and we try to talk to everybody, we have a broken website, plain and simple. 
So are you a big fan of these? And, you know, I'm not techie in any way, but are you a big fan of these? I guess it's these website metric measurement type things. So metrics are everything, right? Okay. But if you go to HubSpot, which is a website that has like a CRM and social media management, all this stuff, they want you to look at over a hundred KPIs or key performance indicators, uh, better known as metrics, right? Um, that's another reason I wrote the rule of 26. They don't, all of those metrics, all those KPIs don't move the revenue needle. These three do. And that was my goal was to find out what KPIs actually move the revenue needle. When you're going through the rule of 26 and you increase your traffic by 26% and all other things stay the same, you've actually increased your revenue from your website 26% because you're getting 26% more business. You do it again with say conversion rate. Now you're getting 52% more business. You compound it by that last 26% and all of a sudden you've got hundred percent more business. And so it's simple. We only look at those KPIs. Now I will look at other KPIs in uh, getting the objectives done, right? But I only need my, my clients and my business owners to understand what really most means the most to them, revenue. Okay. So when you look at conversion, mm -hmm. which is people who come to your website and become a client, right? Not necessarily a client. That's a that would be your close rate. Conversions on web for website marketing are people who reach out to the company in a profitable way. Okay. Okay. So phone call asking for more information could be a conversion, right? As long as they're that phone is ringing to somebody who can close a sale, right? Or get them to the place that they need to be closed. Okay. A form, right? To get more information so that you can qualify them. Okay. And then third, an appointment could be another one, right? So okay. a lot of times we'll, we will um, track click to call on a mobile site and we will track the appointments and we'll track the, fir the uh, forms filled out. Those are the most common, okay? okay? Sometimes people have something where they're downloading a book um, or, a, or, a, or a white paper, if you will. And they have to give their email. Some people consider that a conversion because that then that email now goes into a drip a campaign that gets them to you when they're ready. Yeah. So how, how, um, how successful is that? Because I think thinking like CPA firms, especially a lot of websites are, you can download something that, you know, some type of educational material. Is that, is that fairly successful or people just take, take the information and that's it. The qualified people will take the information and then call you. Right. But it, it, th this is the thing, your trigger or your, you know, that, that value in advance is only as good as the down, uh, line campaign, right? If you're just collecting emails and not doing anything with them, it's absolutely useless to everybody. Right. Because a lot of people need that little nudge, even after they get that, that awesome information that you've shared. Right. Um, for CPAs, I find, and financial advisors are different than CPAs, right? So my CP, my financial advisors love to give books and uh, calculators and all those yeah, things because right. people are doing research. They're getting that. They just need to know more. They just don't understand it. But my CPAs, yeah. most of them are B2B. As a B2B, I'm not sitting there looking for a white paper on how to do my taxes. Yeah. I'm just looking for the people who know what I need, right? And so a lot of CPAs, um, my biggest CPAs are generalists. My most profitable CPAs make a lot less than my big CPAs because they niche down to who they serve. They'll get down yeah. to un-industry and sometimes specialties within that industry. And they do that over and over and over again because they can systemize it to a point where they're so efficient, they can still charge what everybody else is charging. But the mindset is that, hey, these guys know my business and my industry. So I'm going to get the best service here. And the more you niche, the better service you can for each industry, because you're seeing that repetition over and over again. Right? So if you're doing contractors, you know, that contractors books look a certain way. So if something looks out of place, it's right there in front of you. Whoa, wow. That's awesome. So if your website can talk about your expertise in that, then you're golden. Um, I've got a fractional CFO, that basically only works with contractors 10 million and above in annual revenue. 
and he basically shows them how to double their cash flow. Right. Okay, great. So my whole job is to get in front of contractors, 10 million and above who are having problems with their cash flow so that they can either pay their, their uh, employees enough to keep them because we're having, you know, a labor shortage and the capital to grow so that they can buy the materials to take on more projects. So I created a whole framework around that specifically. And that's all he talks about. Yeah. And I guess when you do that, then you really can on your website be using you instead of me because it's like i understand your problems you know this is what exactly. we deal with right your exact and situation. so we exactly and so for him we're we've created a framework around his process right um and frameworks are really good and you, it's not that we have to create new things we just have to discover how we're doing it different than the next person because if you don't have a differentiator, it's really hard to compete in a commoditized uh, service like accounting, tax yeah. accounting, business accounting, audits, all that stuff. I mean, that's it's commoditized at that point, and you have to show that value. And that's really hard for the CPA a lot of times because my CPAs are not the most creative people. That's why they bring me in and say, will you make me look cool? Will you yeah. make me look better than just a bean counter? Because I'm more than a bean counter. And I get to know them. And we pull that that um, that uh, that personality out of them and let yeah. that shine in their passion to help who they are actually passionate about helping. Right. So what do you think about how important or is it, does this factor in at all to have like videos on your website or not? Not really. It depends on what you're talking about and the complexity of it for my bigger CPA firms. It's not as much for my smaller firms. Yes, because you're, you are hiring as a user. I'm, I'm hiring that person, right? It's usually a lot of CPAs or the solopreneur, or if they have some bookkeepers and, and other folks helping them, they're still the point, right? So they're the face of the company. So having a video showing that face of the company and talking creates a much deeper relationship with the brand than not having it at all. And people need to realize that people buy people, right? They do business with people they like and trust. And so if you can have a video that can talk about your differentiators, and talk about the pains that you overcome for your specific industry. And they're talking to the best client, not worrying about alienating people because yeah. some of the best, the most pro um, profitable calls you ever take are the ones you don't have to because wasting your time on people who can't afford you or won't appreciate you is costing you a lot of time and money. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about time and money, you know, <laughs> We, the owners we work with, they're up to like 50 million in revenue. Right. And most of them are somewhere between 10 and 20 in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and gosh, the whole marketing umbrella, just, it, it, you can break out into a cold sweat in the middle of the night when you think about all the different pieces to it. You know, you got branding, you got digital mm -hmm. marketing, which you can break down into SEO and social paid ads and mm -hmm. email campaigns. And then you've got the whole marketing strategy. Then you got the website and the rebuild. And it's like, oh my gosh, how many marketing people do I need? And do I need all of this stuff? And what's going to work and what's not going to work and what metrics are right? <laughs> and and it can just start to get overwhelming because you, right. you you know you just you start to think time and money ching 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 <laughs> so uh, oftentimes it's 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 tough for these small business owners to to know where to start right so it, along those lines do you have like a does rule 26 speak to that or do you have another rule that you could say <laughs> <laughs> so That's CPAs so CPAs notoriously across the industry uh, spend the least amount on marketing than any other industry. <laughs> it's less than th it, it was before COVID, it was less than three uh, 1.5 percent of gross revenue. After COVID is now up to three percent. Most businesses need to be spending anywhere between eight 
in 20% of annual revenue for drastic growth. Okay. Now, why is that? Why is it that CPAs don't spend a lot? Usually because they don't believe in it. Okay. You don't need everything. If you're a small business and you say you're a micro business, you're a solopreneur, you do not need everything because you don't have the bandwidth for everything, money or time, period. Okay. So mm -hmm. we need to take a look at for CPAs. I feel that search marketing is one of the most profitable things to get into as soon as possible because you have people looking for your service. That's where we need to start, right? Get the low hanging fruit. Now you let your website filter out the people who are looking for your services, but don't qualify to work with you. And then talk to the people who do period in a story for my folks who are doing 20 million or more is much more comprehensive. What I usually do is become a fractional CFO or CMO, sorry, for my larger firms because they do not want to spend a quarter million dollars on a in-house CMO. Okay, great. Now they might have a small marketing department. Great. Fractional CMOs can help them get everything, leverage their talents and their time. And fractional CMOs have tools that will negate the need to add more people as the campaigns get more complex. My CPAs, the boards that I serve for, because the bigger ones always have boards of directors, right? They don't talk to me, but once a year, they want to see the numbers done and done. We are at 10 million this year. We'd like to be at 15 million by the, the time we talk to you again, let's go. And so then I, I'm talking to people that are downline from my, my top folks because they're getting $250 an hour. They do not need to talk to me when I'm supposed to be making, getting them more busy than they should, than they are right now. Right. So you don't necessarily have to do everything regardless of your size to answer your question. What you do need is to take a look at your market specifically, your industry specifically, and then take a look at the strategies. Once you have a strategy, then you can dive into the tactics like you were talking about, SEO, direct mail, whatever that looks like for you. Because not everything's going to work for everyone. None of my campaigns ever look exactly the same, um, even for the same service. Very helpful. Okay, so kind of full circle. So no matter where you're at in that continuum as in, in regard to size of business or industry, rule 26 in your website still applies for everyone. Everyone should be getting a, having their moving toward their website generating revenue. Yes, and the rule of 26 is just a simplified way of approaching that objective, right? And if you don't, the, well, a lot of times what we'll find is that people have, the rule of 26 helps me simplify the process because they, that there has been a firm before me who's made it extremely complex. And it's like, I, I don't want to make that mistake again. I don't want to spend another six months with somebody who's going to take my money and not give me anything. Right. So starting with the goal in mind, start, you know, Stephen Covey starting with the end in mind. Now we have something that we're both working towards before you even hire me. That's great. And you should do that with any firm that you're working with. You should have 90 day sprints going and saying, Hey, listen, what are we doing in the next 90 days? And what should we see from it? Great. A good marketer will go. These are the things that we're going to do in the next 90 days that will get us closer to the end goal. Right? Cause the rule 26 doesn't happen overnight. Right. You don't just double your website, over, your website revenue overnight. Some of this stuff takes months. Some of it takes years, depending on where you're at to go from 20 million to 40 million is not a, a one year <laughs> prospect. Right. You just don't do that. You probably can't do it unless you're acquiring another company. Right. And then that's going to take another two to three years. We just had one of my firms take up on two clients in the last five years. So we've had a lot of growth that way right? Just by that artificial growth by acquisition. But at the same time, we know that we have to support all of that infrastructure with more sales, right? Just acquiring them and their, maybe their marketing is lackluster. Okay. Well then we're adopting what is working for us. That's what allowed us to acquire them. Now it has to work for everybody. Well, that flex right there takes a little time because your brand is not just now we're called this or that old firm, the firm that you acquired 
is now called whatever your firm is. Or maybe you have to change names altogether where your name is Alton Rogers versus Alton Rogers and company. Well, that branding over that's over time. Remember when AT&T took over Singular? Nobody knew if Singular bought AT&T or AT&T bought Singular because AT&T went orange, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden Singular went away and then AT&T went back to blue. That's all branding strategy. Yeah. Well, you know what, you're, you're speaking our love language when you say things like build with the end in mind and, and simplification. Uh, those are two things that we're all, we're all about here. Um, okay, so with the time that we have left, Buzz, what should we be asking you that we haven't asked you to this point? And any final words of brilliant wisdom that you can share with, <laughs> with listeners? It's just going to change their whole life. Well, I feel well, I like already, if you... you've already shared that, right? The rule of 26 <laughs> is going to change their life. That's what I was saying. Like if they haven't been listening, if you haven't been listening for the last 20 minutes, <laughs> maybe we should just re-listen to this episode. Um... <laughs> All right. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? And is yeah. there anything that we should have asked that we didn't? So <clears throat> I think that it's really important. You know, we talked about the fact that CPAs notoriously do not invest in their marketing, right? So it's important to understand you know, CPAs, no profit margins, right? How do we create the profit margin so that we can invest in ourselves and so that we can pay ourselves first and set aside that money so that we can go there? Because 3% of somebody who is not doing more than a million is not a lot of money. 10 million. Okay. You have enough money to do what you need to do. Okay. Um, so the smaller you are, just remember the more of your actual revenue is going to go into growth unless you're just looking to have a lifestyle business. That's one thing I think that we just need to make sure that people understand. Marketing means eyeballs. Eyeballs cost money, regardless of whether you're buying somebody's time like mine and my team or advertising uh, dollars, right? It's going to cost you money, right? And don't go cheap. That's the biggest mistake I see people come to me. They're like, yeah, we went with these people. They have, I just had one yesterday. They said for four nine and nine a month, they were going to do everything we needed to do to double our money, you know, double our money coming next year. And I'm like, how, what are they going to do? Like, there's just no way, like, you know, unless you're only doing $10 a month right now and you're pulling $500 out of your pocket to get $20 a month. No, it's not happening. Right. It's a long process. Um, some of the things are fast. Speed equals money. Just remember that as well. Um, and then a, a parting thought is that the sooner that you can start looking at your website as a revenue generating tool for your business, the sooner you're going to be able to get your business in a position to exit. That's Excellent. Great. Okay. Thanks, Buzz. That's, a, that's a great. You're lesson. welcome. <laughs> So, Buzz, oh, as you wrap way up, bring, way to bring that, up that was not rehearsed. <laughs> Pat, Pat must be sending you direct chat notes about what to say or something. Um, it, I have actually literally used websites to help people increase their multiple by two. So, I had wow. a dentist one time that had he was getting he was trying to double his he was trying to get a, a, a multiplier of three. To do it, we needed to grow his business to a certain size to get that three multiple. And yeah. he wanted to maximize what that multiple was, right? Of what they were multiplying. In nine months, we were able to actually create a system where he, and we niched him down and we got the right people in there for his most profitable. So he was getting all of his new clients were now more profitable than all of his old clients before that. And he grew it. I want to say we grew his whole business in 30 by 33% in nine months. He sold it within 16 months. And this is up in Alaska. Those firms, unless there is another dentistry or dental practice that's looking to acquire, do not sell fast. So yeah. it's all went, for, it all came from him focusing on a tool that can leverage revenue for him without having to spend more time and you know, shaking hands and kissing kids and networking and all the other things that service centric businesses think they have to do. That's great to get started. But if you're trying to leverage and you're trying to scale, growing and scaling two different things, right? Growing, you can grow, but you can't scale, you can't outgrow scale, right? 
And that's where systems that don't include your brain power have to be in place to garner more output than you can in 24 hours. Excellent. Yep. So thanks for that. And as we wrap up today, two questions, anything you'd like to promote and how can listeners contact you? Sure. I could guess I could promote the book at rule of two six.com. And if you want to get reach to me, a hold of me, then uh, go to my website at buzzworthy.biz. Any of the, um, I, we have some free um, consultations or complimentary, uh, complimentary talks that we do and discoveries for anybody. Just find it, 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 at least just point you in the right direction. If not, there might be an opportunity for me to help you scale your business and get it exit ready. Um, and that all of those appointments are with me personally. Um, I make sure that I talk to everyone who uh, works with my company, period, end of story. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Buzz. This has been great. I'm sure our listeners learned a lot. I know Pat and I have as well. So thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. And listeners, if you want help in maximizing the value of your business or planning for your eventual exit, you can reach Pat at 301-859-0860. You can reach me at 301-951-9090. You can also access resources at exitreadiness.com, grfcpa.com, and nslp.com. As always, thanks for listening. And until next time on the Exit Readiness Podcast, this is Walter Dial and Pat Ennis signing off. <laughs>